Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to some of you and peace to the rest of you. This is Black Heart Sign and Black In again. More important than the like or the subscribe button is going to be the share button. And I ask you to uh, either hit that button and spread the link or just repeat the content to somebody uh, that could benefit from it. Um, this being said, this particular recording is going to benefit uh, quite a few people. Some of you know a lot of the ones who will benefit, and some of you don't know anybody who might benefit. It's not that you don't know anyone who could benefit, but some of you don't know who could benefit, so therefore you don't know that you know some of them. In the video entitled, How Black Consciousness and Colorism Led Me to the Red Pill, one of my videos, I briefly said how the different treatment that I got from black women, which I later learned was due to nothing other than my phenotype, um, caused me an abnormally low, to, low libido for a teenager or a young adult, and I didn't go into much detail about it. Last night, I was on Izzy's live stream on her channel called Light Skin Love, and it's entitled Less, Lorma, Less Normalized Light Skin Love. Though I disagree and agree with her depending on the point, I was on a live stream anyway. Someone commented on how light skinned guys actually do suffer more than they let on. And uh, I disclose that even I knew about this because I had an abnormally low libido and intimacy problems in my teens, young adulthood. And it was understood that this was from the differentiated treatment I got from women growing up and the mixed messages too. And that was understood. See, I wasn't allowed to ask even regular questions or draw normal conclusions like other guys were. I can't even go through uh, all of the signs. If I told you about um, how I was treated abnormally compared to other men, uh, it would take a long time. To do that would take longer than whatever this, that portion by itself would be longer than the rest of this video put together, however long it's going to turn out, and I don't know. Because it was many hours a day. It's five days a week, sometimes seven days a week. It was constant. It didn't change. So I couldn't ask regular questions. I couldn't draw normal conclusions like other guys were allowed to do. Everything I did and everything I said was overanalyzed, questioned and scrutinized. And I thought it was something that I was doing. So I didn't know at first that lighter skinned guys, especially if their hair was straight, were going through something similar. It took a while to figure that out. A long time. One guy I knew always had long distance relationships and I wondered why. Turn out the women lived in central Louisiana. And in central Louisiana, certain towns are, all, are like halfway, not only Creole, but halfway what they call Greek Creole. Those are the ones that look like the stereotype we associate with Creoles. Most Creoles don't look like that. They look like any other African-American. But the ones with the stereotypical Creole look that we think of are referred to as Breek, and you got towns where half of them look like that. So guys with his hair texture were more common, and now I understand it. Being seen out in public with him in that part of the state was not a problem. In our city, though, closer to the coast, it was an issue. If he was seen in public with his sister, and if she was tropical looking, it was over for both of them. Socially, she would actually lose out. And as far as sisters were concerned, any black man that walked up to him was a threat and probably going to hit him, although that was really unrealistic as hell to think. That's what was going through sisters' minds. Now I understand, but at the time I did not. At that time, I didn't get it because I wasn't allowed to notice such a pattern. If he noticed that other men didn't have to, uh, to do as much work, then believe me, he would have developed a lower libido too. If he didn't make the comparison, then no biggie. Well, he later showed little interest in being alone with a particular lady, and I peeped it. When I asked him, he said that they would have gotten caught, which was smart thinking on his part, but they would not have gotten caught. And the other thing I had to wonder is, then since they would not have gotten caught, why would he make that excuse? Trust issues. Then I noticed this in some other guys, and I wondered if we just naturally produced less testosterone or something because we were paler until I remembered the sexual stereotypes that we had about whites 
and when you factor those in, it would not explain what I saw. Something was going on, but I had to think about other things too, and so I couldn't meditate on this. Thing is this though, when I mentioned this in the chat, some thought I was trolling, but Izzy herself and some other commentators like Brady said that no, light-skinned men could go through low self-esteem because of being singled out at times. Now this was thoughtful of them, but not every thought is right, and this actually showed the depths of the brainwashing too. And what I'm going to say is not even blaming them per se. Men aren't women and women aren't men. So understand this. And I want sisters to realize this. Awareness of a pattern of reactions from others doesn't mean you internalize it just because you notice it. If you don't internalize it, it means your self-esteem isn't suffering. It's your trust and your expectations that suffer. If attractive women of your own origin consistently accuse you or suspect you of every sexual deviancy from homosexuality to pedophilia to bestiality, that doesn't mean you will become one of those things, hopefully, but it does mean you will be aware of this pattern. You won't expose, I'm sorry, you won't expect these women to trust you. You won't expose these women, but you won't expect them to trust you. And therefore, you won't trust them either. After all, if you want one of these things and they aren't confusing you with someone else as far as you know, then why are they suspecting you and accusing you then? So how will you trust them? Whatever reason, if they don't, they don't think that you're someone else and they don't have any evidence and they just come up with this based on they looked at you and thought this and it jumped into their head, then how do you trust them? See, I went through, but the whole point is not me or my memories, which sometimes interrupt my sleep until now in my 40s. Waking up afraid that I'm going to be approached by a police officer because a little kid got victimized and, and didn't see the attacker. And I can't prove it wasn't me. Yeah, sometimes these things interrupt my sleep even now, but that's not the point. I'm not at all special. The point is that this means other men have, have gone through something similar. I'm just the one that's willing to say we went through it and yanked the covers off the facade that we men are told to put up as though we went through nothing at all. I can do it because I'm anonymous. I live an ocean and a continent away from the rest of black America. And so there's no backlash because I decided to go ahead and, and, and point this out. See, I know darker skinned men went through some stuff. And I said so because black folks are just playing hard on each other, period, especially at a young age. But honestly, it wasn't darker men who said we went through nothing at all because we're light skinned and we didn't say they went through nothing at all. We knew this thing cut both ways. It was always sisters who doubted it. But the whole time they chose darker brothers. And I was actually glad about this and still am until now. There's no reason that darker men in the black race should be excluded by black women. There's no reason that darker women should be excluded by black men. But the number of sisters screaming about colorism against black women and the number of them saying that light skinned men don't go through anything are too similar. I've had some sisters tell me in 2018 that they dealt with colorism, but they were light skinned. They felt pain for their darker sisters, which was fine. But when I said that I was told by three women in 2001 that I was being treated differently by black women because of my shade and straight hair and my exotic appearance, they wanted to tell me that it couldn't be true. I explained that in my age group, that was exactly how it was. And it wasn't even a secret anymore. They said it was only three women. But it's three women at the same company who don't know each other, who know me, though, who know that I was trying to get rid of confusion from mixed messages the sisters kept sending me, who told me without knowing each other that I was being treated differently because of my phenotype. So how was I supposed to ignore that? I mean, if these same three had told me that my breath stank or that I walked funny or that my clothes were bad, then I would have to sit up and pay attention to it because three of them don't know each other. But when three of them explained to me that I was being treated differently because of my phenotype, I'm supposed to ignore that because that excuses me personally. And that's what it really comes down to. When you're black, you're supposed to take blame even when you're not guilty. Even when the evidence exonerates you, you're supposed to take blame, somehow look for a way to take responsibility. Now, adults should take responsibility commensurate with their control over something, commensurate with their authority over something. But when you're black, you typically are deprived of authority, but you're not deprived of responsibility. And we've internalized that. Now, that's a diagnosis we need to make. 
not this crap bullshit we've been running around doing to each other, which is mostly sisters doing to brothers. See, look, you know why they wanted me to ignore that evidence? Like I said, they still wanted me to limit myself to black women, despite how bad of a deal that would have been to me. Now, I did it. But they didn't understand my reasons. They forgot that in other countries, black women may or may not do this. And they forgot that Southeast Asian women don't have issues with light skinned black men as a whole. And they would not mistreat a lighter man, even if they did not want him personally. They wouldn't try to put me on this eternal back burner, swearing I should not give up a go elsewhere. But I shouldn't look for any better a response from black women as a whole, other than being shot down, even when I wasn't shooting my shot. Unless, of course, she was crazy, ugly, too young, not educated at all or already somehow spoken for. Which means that I could go to jail in all of these cases because, or I could get hurt in all of these cases. It always had to be a mismatch so bad that it was dangerous for me because she's either crazy, like I said, or, you know, ugly. And that doesn't always bring a danger to it. But then again, when you find someone more attractive, she might turn crazy. Too young, which is dangerous because you could go to jail if one of them just lies on you. Or you could get beat up by, by some of the male relatives. Not educated, that's dangerous. Or already spoken for, that's dangerous. You see what I was being offered. This meant other guys were going through the same thing. So I was supposed to only expect that which would be a bad deal for me. And so were other guys I knew that resembled me, yet we weren't supposed to step out with even with other women of color. And we weren't supposed to say that this was going on. And we internalized that. We internalized it because, well, nobody said that they were going through this out, outwardly and openly. So consequently, none of us knew what the other one was going through similar. One of the ladies didn't even want me to consider foreign black women. Imagine that. But she's spoken for. She's going to go back. She was about to resign, go back to the U.S. and marry her sweetheart. But she don't want me to consider foreign black women and write off Ados women. The other dated a non-black man who actually has black ancestry about which he knew, but she didn't. What it came down to was that if there is a complexion of man that is seen as what many call beta, but is actually closer to omega by the person, according to the person who came up with these terms, then it's the lighter skinned black man. And the straighter his hair is, the worse it is for him. Even in the eyes of women that internally, personally would want such a man. Awareness of this does not mean that a man has low self-esteem. He may or may not, but if he has low self-esteem, then he thinks others are better than him, more normal, and he's below normal somehow. That means he actually views himself as being less than. Knowing that others may view you this way is not the same thing as actually having low self-esteem. And I'm going to prove it to you. Sisters are sitting up saying, no, there really ain't no difference. Some of them are just saying, well, black hard need to shut up, so whatever he's saying is wrong. No, no, hold up. See, when we're dealing with white folks, then that's when we understand it, but not when we're dealing with each other. See, many men don't internalize these things. Many men simply assess the situation and realize what sisters want and how unrealistic it could be, so they adapt to it. Now, if our awareness of white supremacy is not paranoia, and therefore those subhuman devil crackers shouldn't try to paint it as such, then a light-skinned man's awareness of colorism against him, or a darker brother's awareness of colorism against him, or a darker sister's awareness, or a lighter sister's awareness should not at all constitute any kind of complex or low self-esteem. There's nothing to diagnose simply because someone is aware. Now, if you continue to see colorism after it ceases to exist and be practiced against you, which is what happens with a lot of dark skinned women, you could say that that's an honest mistake, but even that's not necessarily a complex. That's not, that's not something for which to blame them. A lot of darker sisters stop facing colorism when they get into their adulthood, especially in the romantic market. But however, they don't realize that that's over with and played out in adulthood, that the backlash does not allow this anymore. But they don't know that it's over. And I understand you, they can make that mistake. But understand this, too. There's nothing to diagnose simply because someone is aware. And this is where even sisters who mean well still regularly screw up. Izzy made the mistake in this case of associating it. Brady was talking about a man she'd been with and maybe he did have it. I don't know. She does. However, 
She said that they were, able, she, did, she mentioned that his libido was not anything abnormal, so therefore it tells me that he did, he was dealing with this sort of thing, but it wasn't necessarily low self-esteem, it's just he may simply have a, a, a expected others to come out of nowhere and single him out because this is what had happened before. They're trying to diagnose stuff that isn't even abnormal. And I want sisters to cut this mess out. You know you're socialized to be seen with the Chocolate Brothers, and why not, as long as that's your preference. You're also socialized to feel embarrassed to be seen with a man that's doubtfully black, questionably black. And that is not fair to you if you like a black man that fits this description. So when these brothers are aware of it, don't call it a complex or try to diagnose it as something like low self-esteem or anything else. If a man has a drawback in a particular surrounding or region, something that women don't like or, or want about him as a whole, and he's not aware of it, you know damn well some sister's going to tell him finally, publicly, loudly, with a neck rolling and finger snapping and making a show so that she can get a high five from her girls afterwards. You think you something with your little short ass, or you think you just like other guys but you broke as hell, or like as some more said, you trying to have big dick conversation with your little dick ass. And she's going to get points for it from other women that see it. But when a man is simply aware of whatever the drawback is and sisters realize he's aware, then they feel this need to tell him that he's got a complex or low self-esteem or something. There are guys who have it, but awareness is not the same thing. So sisters, stop confusing this. Not only in my case, but in our cases. If you were blamed for being a slut while you were still a virgin and then called a lesbian, and you prefer guys, and then heard that you might be unsafe even to children, but you're nothing but good to children in real life, then what the hell would you go through psychologically? Without a self-esteem problem, you would still suffer in the brain, and the brain is the most important sexual organ, believe it or not. If you could become frigid and desexualized because of unfair experiences and false accusations, then so can men who can actually go to jail more easily for anything having to do with sex at all to begin with. Suffice it to say, stop trying to diagnose brothers and stop making negative assumptions about brothers simply because you want to be seen in public with someone else or because we're just used to doing this. I'm not blaming anybody for being concerned, not at all. I'm not flawing Izzy for that. I'm not faulting Brady for that. But the, I realize that a lot of sisters beyond them have made that mistake of assuming that awareness of an actual reality constitutes some kind of paranoia. That's not fair to say. It's not paranoia. It's not low self-esteem. It's nothing to diagnose. There are actual patterns. People become aware of it. That's what they should do. They should be aware of it. I hope that this has been a benefit. Blackheart, signing Blackout. Assalamu alaikum.